Saturday Night Theatre, a place in the country by David Parnell, with June Barry as Molly Callahan and Molly Sugden as Mrs. Drew. Tonight, Montgomery's armies, the British Second and the American Ninth, are pouring across the Lower Rhine in the biggest combined land and air operation since D-Day. And according to all reports, everything is going extremely well with our men firmly established on the eastern bank. Bridgehead have been won along a 14-mile oh, front up, from you. the south of Emily. Can I go to Uncle Charlie's, Mum? All right, if you take Bill with you. Oh, hey, Mum, do I have to drag him around everywhere I go? You're the man of the house, aren't you? I told you before, you've got to love your brother. Now go on if you're going. Tell Aunt Inan I'm coming over at six-ish to fit her jacket. Is that what you're making now? Yeah. Bill's upstairs rooting. I'm going. Bill! Come down the dancers. Who calls them that? Bran. Bye, Mum. <sighs> I've got to get out of here. I've got to get out of here. I've got to get out of here. I can't carry on living here as though nothing had ever happened. It's like being sent back to school. As though I'd never been married and had two kids. I've come right round in a circle. Oh, there must be jobs somewhere. Somewhere. I've got to get out of this house. Out of this street, out of bloody Liverpool. That's practical. I must get away from here and be on my own. Free! Oh, it's crazy now. Where did you get... Oh, Molly, just a minute. Oh, that's better. Here is that Nin's jacket. Why does she want the shoulders padded up like that? She looked like a chucker out at a wine lodge. Why did you let the boys out without the coats? They're playing on that corrugated iron again at the top of the road. They're only going to Charlie's. It's only a minute's walk. Well, they should be wrapped up. Bill hasn't got over that last cold. You know, that child's very nervy. He hasn't spoken to me for a week. He'll be all right. He doesn't properly understand what's happened. Joe's coming home early today. That's why you let the boys out. Very wise. Dan only hides under the table when his granddad's around anyway. Perhaps he'll grow up to be a coal miner. Has the paper arrived yet? Yes, in the door. I didn't know he'd been. You're reading that paper a lot these days. Don't think I don't notice. You're not thinking of joining the library, are you? You know what I'm looking for, ma'am. Yeah, I suppose I do. But I don't want to know. You can't manage by yourself, love. Not with two hungry boys. They eat like birds. They won't in a few months. When they've got over losing the dad, they'll start eating. And you won't be able to stand by yourself. Did Nin want that much padding in the shoulder? She's bony enough as it is. Oh, I'll light the gas for me, love. I've sat down. All right. God, give me a new pair of feet. Molly. Hmm? Don't fight tonight. Just leave him to me. Why not? I'll let him walk all over you. That's what you seem to enjoy. Yeah, you were always my ugly duckling, my favourite. I don't like it when you're disrespectful to him. I thought you had to earn respect. He doesn't know me from Adam. I'll keep out of the way. Here we are. What's it say? Cook. You're not a cook. I'm only 25. I can learn. They'll want a trained cook. All you can cook is scouse and peewack. They won't want that if they can afford a proper cook. I'll give it a try. God, girl, you've written off after every job in that paper for the last two months and you've got nowhere. You've got nothing to offer. I'm taking this up to Nins. Well, if you worry, you won't pass him in the street. That's uh, not fair, is it? The way we have to dodge around just for him. Well, Mrs. Callahan, does that make sense? There's only one way to find out, I suppose. <laughs> um, just one of the boys is going to school, then. That's right. Well, I hope it works out. I'll teach you all I can. Do you think we'll get on? I don't see why not. Mm. You're giving me a chance, and I'm thankful for that. The rest is up to me. Uh, you strike me as being a very determined young woman, Mrs. Callahan. I'm determined to try and make a life for the boys and myself outside Liverpool. I don't like it anymore. Well, that is something we share. I don't know how people tolerate living in a town like this. But then we don't all have a choice, do we? My husband and I are very fortunate. I mean, the part of Cheshire we live in is very beautiful. I think you'll like it enormously. The further away it is from here, the better. Uh, 
Liverpool was a mess before the Germans started bombing it, and it's ten times worse now. Where I live is terrible. They've done nothing to clear it uh, up. Yes, and um, when could you start, Mrs Callaghan? Well, it's Thursday. I could be there for Monday. Oh, splendid. I'll give you the number to ring from the station, and I'll come and pick you up in the car. Oh, Dan will like that. He's mad on cars. Oh, awful things, but you can't do without them in the country. Uh, Mrs. Callaghan, please don't think I'm being unduly curious, but uh, do you have any other source of income? I get a pension. That will be your war widow's pension. May I know how much? Sixteen shillings a week. Then, um, for tax purposes, whatever I pay you will be considered as additional. Uh, you will not be in receipt of a tax-free pension by any chance. I didn't know there was such a thing. <laughs> not in England these days. Uh, I think a short probationary period at three pounds, then three pounds ten, plus free accommodation and board would be reasonable. What do you think of that? You're not going. Did you see our Dan in bed, Mum? Don't ignore me as if I wasn't there. I said you're not going. Will you stop shouting? I'm not shouting. You tell her. Make a fool of herself. I can take care of her. That's my job now, isn't it? To take care of what your soft lads left behind. No, Dad. It's the other way round. I'm the one who spends half the time cleaning up after you and carrying you upstairs. You're worse than little Bill. Be quiet, Molly. No. I said, shut up, girl. Shut up. Shut up. I want no more. You will know a man from a pox doctor's clerk. I said I was sorry. I've been in the wars, you know, and I'm in this one. It was nothing special. I'll take care of those boys. Be suffering Christ, I will. <coughs> I've asked you not to spit in the fire like that. It's my bloody fire, isn't it, eh? My half. I've missed it, ma. Mrs. Mop. Can I do with you now, sir? <coughs> I don't want that. You have it. You've got to eat something. I'm not hungry. Out of that chair, Molly. Let me sit down. Have we missed Tommy Hanley? Ah. This is my chair. This one. He's on tomorrow night. What am I going to do with this good food? Uh, will you bring me those fair line boots from under the stairs? This ankle's giving me hell. Uh, uh, you have it, just stick it in the bin. Why don't you go to bed? No. I'm waiting for Fumpf, the German spy. He makes me laugh. <coughs> oh, stop looking at me like that. You're not uh, fit to talk about my soft lad, as you call him. Ballroom You're... dancing, ballroom bloody dancing. That's all he was good for. He was a mad kid. Give him a man's job and a cattle Here we gone. go again. <coughs> Look at you. Don't talk to me about a man's job. How they keep you in work, I don't know. And what do you give my mother apart from a dog's life? Three pounds a week, and I know you get 15. Uh, we know where the rest goes. Down your stinking throat, you make me sick. Molly, don't talk to your father like that. That thing was never my father. Not that thing there. You never married it, not that. You're out of here in five minutes. Go on, and don't come back if you want to stay in one piece. I'm going anyway. I'll say you're going. Go on, get out. In the morning, Dad. This instant. No, Josh, you can't. Mm. Now be quiet and eat your dinner. This is my house. The Corpy's mm. house, Dad. Not yours. You didn't even finish paying for the piano. Dan will never be a player now, will he? Not with you to take care of him. Oh, get to bed, Molly, I told you. For the last time, I'll go. Just for you, ma'am. And you'll see the back of me tomorrow. I don't have to live with that thing there. God almighty. He's dropped off in the middle of all that. What a hero. Keep your voice down. You've been bad tonight, Molly Drew. Mrs Callaghan to you. Or anybody. Good night. Little Billy Wilkins found a penny in the garden one fine summer's day. And because he had never had more than a farthing, he shouted hip, hip, hooray. Down to the tobacconist he did roam and bought a little packet all coloured green and gold. And in five little sniffs, and in five little whiffs, he was lying on the tramway lines. 
looking greener than the label and wishing he was able to smoke his little last wood fine. Oh, that's my favourite, Gran. You won't forget it, will you? Oh, not a chance of that, son, when I smoke 50 a day myself. Now look after Bill. He's your brother. You must love him and watch over him. Be loyal, Dan, son. Will you come to see us? Mm, you won't lose your gran. I'll be over before long. Your granddad asked me to say goodbye for him because he had to go to work. If you come to see us, will you leave granddad behind, please? That's not being loyal, is it, Dan? Being loyal means being loyal to all your family. We'll have to go, ma'am. The taxi's here for the cases. Oh, I never realised I had so much stuff. Wedding presents, I suppose. I'm not sure why I'm taking half of it. The accumulation of years, my mother called it. So you're going now, Molly. Like you said you would. Watch where being a servant gets you. Keep off your knees if you can. All right. Bye, love. Bye, ma'am. Bye, Gran. Bye, Bill and Dan. I'll draw you some of me mice on the bottom of the letters. Hello. Hello. Can I come in? All depends who you are and what you want. Why well, didn't the old lady tell you about me? What's old lady? Mrs. Denise. I'm the gardener. It's time for me elevenses. I have them here. She didn't mention you. <laughs> I'm not surprised. The colonel's the one who likes the garden. I grow soybeans for him. What's the matter with ordinary beans? Ah, he was out east. Have you made some tea? Yes, it just needs to brew a minute. Ah, oh, come on then. I'll show you what we've got in the garden. You'll need to know. I'll have to tie them broad beans up with a little bust in this wind. Beans again? Aye, there's runners, there's haricot. Over by the wall is the Colonel Sawyer's. Mm, we're short of nothing we've got. Eh? Carrots. I can recognise those. Oh, and the cabbages. Ah, I stagger the cabbages. Get away. Cos lettuce, cabbage lettuce, celery. Growing celery is difficult, Molly. Oh, you know my name. Did you also know it's Mrs Callaghan? I call her Mrs, and so... I'd end up calling you Molly sooner or later, so it might as well be now. That tea'll be stewed. Hey, what's that? Broccoli. Do they eat it? It looks poisonous. <laughs> Lady Priscilla eats a lot of it. She's a vegetarian. Is she the one who's away in Switzerland being finished? <laughs> they won't finish her. It'll take more than Switzerland to finish Lady Priscilla. I wouldn't like to fight her. I like the garden. You know I've got two boys. Yes. I'm glad you've got kids. I lost my daughter some time back. Lost her? She went in to have her tonsils out and that was that. Don't ask me why, because I don't know. It was a mystery. I used to have a sandwich, me elevens is Molly. Beef or something off the cold cut, is that all right? You're a working lad. What do you want for pudding? <laughs> Come on, get in, you two. Oh, you're both as black as the hops of hell. Mum, did you know that he's got a car and she's got a car as well? She's the cat's mother. Mrs Denise, not she. What's he then? He's the colonel. Hey, did you leave my submarine at Gran's house? Oh, I'm sorry. I can build some more room. Put your legs together, look. What's a colonel? Well, there's a colonel that's a nut, and a colonel that's a soldier. What kind is our colonel? He's a soldier, I hope. Our dad was a soldier. That's right. Here, catch the soap. Oh, was he a colonel? Turn round, Bill, and your brother will wash you back. No, no, he was a sergeant. Mum, I like this place. I thought you would. Oh, he's got soap in his eyes again, Mum. Give him a towel. There, there. Poor old wild Billy Cock. Look hard. Come on, look hard. We enjoyed the roast lamb enormously, Molly dear. Excellent. Now, the Colonel would like you to make him a curry with what's left over. Do you think you can manage that? If you'll show me how. Oh, you've never cooked a curry? I've never had foreign food. My mother was a plain cook. I'm as good as her now. 
Well, the sooner we get over this hurdle, the better. We tend to eat a lot of Indian and Chinese food. We lived out there for a long time, you know. I'll do me best. Huh? None of us can do more than that, can we? I was going into Sandbad, but I'll go tomorrow. We can spend the afternoon together, and I'll teach you as much as I know. Right. Right. Now, let's go through the recipe together. This is in my handwriting, and only I can read it. I noticed what beautiful handwriting you had, Molly, from your letter of application. Perfect. My dad has a copper plate hand. It takes a long time over it. I think it would be wisest if you took it down as I gave it to you. Then you can keep it in a book for the future. Here's a pencil. Let me have it back afterwards, won't you? <laughs> Jolly good. First, two pounds of lamb. I, I think there's that much left on that leg. Two pounds of lamb. Home, 5th of April, 1945. Dear Molly... You'll be settled down now and finding out what the job's all about. I was a bit under the weather the day you left, but I soon got over it. I met Eileen McKay in the butchers. She'd changed so much I wouldn't have known her, except for that coat of hers with the stone mat and... Two large onions, sliced. Now, I, th I think the best thing for you to use is this machine here. Yes, yes, that one in the corner. It'll stop you crying. I hate cutting onions. Home, 8th of April, 1945. Dear Molly, how are you, love? Nin was asking after you today. She asked me about the final fitting for her jacket, but I said it would have to wait till you came back for a visit. She wants everything just so... Six cloves of garlic, chopped. What's that? Uh, this is garlic. Oh, I was wondering what that was. I thought it was a withered onion. <laughs> six of those. Oh, no, 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 six of these. See, it comes away in segments. Oh, this is a clove. Oh. If you put six of the whole thing in, no one would want to talk to the Colonel or me for a week. Home, 10th of April, 1945. Dear Molly, well, I've not heard from you yet, but I hope all has gone well. How are me lads? They're the best in the world. Give them a hog from me. One teaspoon of cumin. Oh, a teaspoon of what? Cumin. It's a spice. <laughs> I don't know whether I'm coming or going. Home, 11th of April, 1945. Dear Molly, still I've had no letter from you and you promised to write. I get fed up, stuck here by myself all day. When your father comes in, he just sits there and goes to bed. You know what he's like. His malaria came back last night and I was up and about in the early hours. You'd think it would have gone away after all those years since the last war. Half a teaspoon of cardamom seed, a pinch of saffron... One teaspoon of coriander seed, six cloves. This is like starting a new language. I'm sure I spelled half of these <laughs> wrong. I'll check them for you, dear. Just get them down for the minute. Uh, six peppercorns. Home, 20th of April, 1945. See you, Molly. I've not written for a week because I'm not well. Please come and see me as soon as you can. There's nobody here who cares. Neither our Valerie nor Constance has been round more than once. I can't stand him for much longer the way he is. It was never malaria. You know what it was like, I do. Two red chilies, salt, one and a half tablespoons of curry powder, maybe two for the Colonel, as he likes it very hot. Uh, lemon juice, water. Uh, Mrs. Denise, I know it's not very convenient, but I have to go home for the day. Oh. Can I have tomorrow off? Jim's borrowed a car and he'll drive me there and back. Oh, oh of course. Oh, I, I can't expect you to pull up your roots straight away. Margaret will take care of the boys. They won't get in her way while she's doing the housework. I'm really sorry about this when I've only been here a couple of weeks. It won't happen uh, again. If you've any problems I can help you with, Molly dear, don't hesitate to ask. It's just me, Mother. She's not well and she's missing us. Uh, it's just to show willing. Oh, well, I wouldn't like it to think I'd forgotten her. I have a daughter myself. I hope she's as considerate of me when she's your age. Is that it? The Roncorn Transporter Bridge? Yes. Funny thing, isn't it? Yeah. You'd have thought the Germans would have bombed it. We have to pay to get on. I don't know why they didn't build a normal bridge having got this far. Doesn't look safe to me. Oh, come on. You can only die once. Here's the fare. No, no, I'll get this. You won't. I'm paying for today, Jim. It's me who's had to go to Liverpool. You can be a free chauffeur if you like. Uh, 
Uh, we're hung up here like a couple of Aunt Sally's. I don't go much on heights. That's the Maisie down there. That horrible black stuff. Yeah. It's dirty, all right. Filthy. Fall in that and you'd be poisoned in a minute. Why do you hate your hometown so much? I've got nothing to thank you for. Well, at least it's got character. Whose character? Pubs and football isn't character. They make up ideas about themselves. It's a dirty old dump full of dirty old sailors and dirty old dockers. There's some life there, though. Something to do. Life? <laughs> Perhaps there used to be. There's no life for me there now. Molly. What? You know, I uh, really fancy you. <laughs> I never knew gardeners had that much imagination. Hey, I'm serious. You're not on, La. Honestly. Oh, don't be at it. Be your age. Let's just leave it to one side, all right? Please. Molly, can I ask you something? You can ask what you like. Doesn't mean you'll get told. Do you really like it in the house? Yes, I do. Is there any reason I shouldn't? Oh, no. Not yet. Don't start running her down because she's the boss. She's been good to me, and he's all right. I feel at home there. They want me. And I get paid for doing a job. And why are you rushing off home like this, then? Not that it's any of your business, mm. but I'm going home to put some people in their place so I can keep mine. All right for you? Huh? I don't belong to Liverpool. You can keep it as far as I'm concerned. I can breathe at the house. It's, it's clean, it's warm, and I don't have to scrap with anyone. There's the fields. <laughs> keep your eyes open when we get off the other side of here. Count the green fields of Liverpool. You're not ill. I am. It's me nerves. You got me here on false pretenses. You're not ill. I am. I've been to see the queer fella. He gave me a tonic. He says I'm run down. Dr Roberts gives everybody a tonic. If I had to have my leg off, he'd give me a tonic. And we're all run down. Oh, what a rotten trick, ma'am. All this way. Who's that you brought with you? He's the gardener at the house. Oh, gardener, eh? Oh, gardener. Come into the garden, Lord, for the black bat night hath flown. He could do with some tea after driving all this way. What does his wife think of him coming here with you? We're having this, and then we're going straight back. You're not going straight. We are. And if you pull this kind of trick again, I won't come back at all. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. You don't know what it's like. I don't know what it's like. I lived here, remember? I know only too well what it's like, and I couldn't get out of it fast enough. And now I'm out, I'm staying out. This was a wicked trick, ma'am. I had to ask for the Sunday off. So they don't even let you off for Sunday. What kind of slave drivers are you working for? I'm taking Jimmy's tea. Oh, Jim, is it? Yeah, he looks like a fella who knows it all. Does he take cow's juice, a conny honey? Home, oh, the 10th of May, 1945. Dear Molly, I hope you're satisfied with yourself. Uh, Constance had to come and sleep the night at our house the day you came and went with such a high hand. Your father's going into hospital with his stomach on Tuesday and he's off work. Not that he's ever at home. They've had no overtime at the warehouse for a month now. Thanks for your letter and Dan's drawing. His mice are better than mine, tell him. Would you have time for a walk this afternoon, Molly, dear? A walk? Yes, a walk. Well, I'll, I'll have an hour or two after I've done the dishes. Oh. Where do you want me to walk to? Oh, no, dear. I, I thought we'd go for a walk together. With the little fellow, of course. We can take his pushchair. It's such a lovely day. Oh, right. You would enjoy that, wouldn't you? Oh, yes, I like walking. Uh, well, can you be ready by half past two? Um, Daniel comes home at four, doesn't he? You must be back for his tea. Everybody's tea, I suppose. <laughs> have you got any stout walking shoes? Uh, I've got a pair of wellies. Wellies? Oh, oh, I see. Wellies. Well, I'm not sure about that. Um, I thought we might call in on a friend of mine for a few minutes, and I'm not certain that wellies would be quite the thing. Um, what size do you take? Sixes. Ah. We might do something with a pair of Silla's shoes. I think she takes a seven. Come on upstairs, and we'll see what we can do. Um, won't she mind? Oh, not at all. You'd like Scylla. She's very down to earth. Well, I'll come up with you then. 
Here we are. We're bound to find something here that will fit you. Oh, I've never seen so many pairs of shoes. Well, when you live in the country, you need good footwear. Scylla is rather an unfeminine kind of girl, I'm afraid, and you can see it in this collection. I, I suppose she must have, what would you say, five pairs of riding boots? Well, there's not many girls I know with five pairs of riding boots and one pair of court shoes. <laughs> you try those on, Molly, dear. How is your daughter still in Switzerland with the war on? Isn't she surrounded? Yes. <laughs> yes, that's very perceptive of you, Molly, dear. She is surrounded. The Germans are all round Switzerland. You're not worried? No. You know that Switzerland is a neutral country. I think these will do. Mm -hmm. I'll put some newspaper inside to make them smaller. They don't look bad on me. Well, you've got good legs, Molly, dear. Any shoes you wore would look well on you. <laughs> Even me wellies. Oh, no. I don't think I'm prepared to extend the compliment that far. Would you find it painful to talk about your husband? Not on a day like this. What kind of family did he come from? Same as mine, but a bit better. <laughs> well, I think they're a bit better in the way they behave. <laughs> what does his father do? He was killed in the First War. Oh, dear. One after the other. His mother married again and went to America. She left Jack behind with her sister and brother-in-law and they brought him up. I suppose you could say he was almost an orphan. Why did you do that? I don't know. A strange way to behave. Poor child. Oh, he was all right. Nin and Charlie looked after him as if he was their own child. He didn't want for anything. But she was his mother. Surely that means something to a woman? Depends on the woman, Mrs Denise. There's all sorts. As if I'm not, in it? I can't stand this pain much longer. Oh, now, don't have a drink, Joe. You're going into hospital tomorrow. They asked you not to. They'll find out from your blood if you do. What bloody difference will it make? Oh, now, please, Joe. Oh. Dear God. I said, where is it? Where have you put it? Come on, Lizzie, where is it? I brought it home. I got rid of it. An old bottle of pot. That was good pot. Lizzie, where is it? Tell me where it is. I poured it down the grid. Come down here, Lizzie. No, I won't. Come down here. Oh, what do you want? I want to talk to you. Not when you've got a cob on, Joe. It was for your own good. They can't operate on you if you've got alcohol inside you. The doctor told me that. What are you doing, Joe? Joe, you can't drink all that cough mixture at once. That was a full bottle. Give it to me. There. Who is he? I don't want to come out of that hospital if you're going to pour good port down the grid. That was a present from a friend on the dock road. I'm sick. I'm sick. 25 years I've been sick. And they're not going to change anything with the knife. I've got half a stomach after the gas. What they have for the weekend. A quarter. The time for pouring port down the grid was when Donnelly docked. I want some tea. God, lad, it's half past three in the morning. Make me some tea or I'll put a lip on you. That'd take a man, Joe, not a shirt button. Jim! Ah? Uh, Do you want a picnic? Oh, I'll be there in a minute. I'll just clear these things. Having it out here, are we? I love the sun. Hi. <laughs> You're catching it as well. We're getting quite a tan. Dan's hair's gone a full shade lighter. Yeah, the news from the war was good this morning. Won't be long now. Ah, 
Cake, is it? Did you make it? Yes. I put all our sugar rations together. The theirs? That's part of the arrangement. Yeah. Dan's helping the Colonel polish his car. Yeah. You're doing a lot of grunting this morning. Uh, what do you want for tonight? Have you got a collie? Oh, I'd rather give them another week or a fortnight. Bit of celery. You don't grow beetroots, do you? My dad likes beetroots in vinegar, but it plays hell with his stomach. Acid, I suppose. Try them with celery. You can boil it. You stick to your job and I'll stick to mine. <laughs> I'll have some of your beans. Oh, I've got plenty of broad beans. Runner beans, Jim. Will you pick them after your break? And some flowers for the table. You've got such nice taste. Hey, you are sharp today. Did you sleep in the knife box? Colonel Denise. Yes, Daniel? If you're a soldier, why aren't you fighting in the war? Because I'm too old. They don't want old soldiers. Couldn't you polish the army's cars for them like you're polishing this one? Oh, I could indeed. And couldn't Jim dig their gardens? Army don't have gardens, Haveldar. Are you rubbing hard on that bumper? Mm. You see your face in it? Chop, chop. What's India like, Colonel? That's very hot and very big. Mm. Oh, you've got a good polishing arm there. You're my right-hand man, Haveldar. Oh. I've got an Uncle Jim who ran away to join the army in India. He was only 15. He was in the water polo team. We've got a photograph of him in his bathing cosy. Where is he now? He works on the docks like Grandad. He's got funny eyes like a Chinaman. And he swears a lot. That will do. Now bring that leather. Fall them in in Haveldar. By the right, quick, heart. Left, right, left, right, left, right. Halt! What a pleasant idea. Tea on the grass. Hmm, lovely day. Will you put the bucket away for me, Daniel? In the shed? Now, here you are. That's right. Good effort. Thank you. What did he give you, Dan? A Tripney Joey. That's the Havildar's wages. That's me. Dad's always talking about Havildar's in Turkey. He was the Colonel's right-hand man in India. He never met Uncle Jim, though. Well, he didn't say he'd met him. Hey, the Colonel thinks I'd make a good soldier. Home, the 21st of May, 1945. Dear Molly, I must say you take a lot of interest in what happens here, I don't think. Your father's been out of hospital three days and we've had no word from you. And you didn't write while he was in there recovering from the op. He'll be off work for another month and I know he'd like to hear from you. My wife is completely satisfied with the way you've picked things up, Mrs. Callahan, so we can say that the progression repaired is over. I believe my wife mentioned an increase in salary. Yes, Colonel. I get three pounds ten a week now. And you're happy here? Yes, Colonel. No problems? No, Colonel. My wife tells me that your husband was killed in North Africa. What regiment was he in? The Coldstream Guards. Six footer, eh? Six foot one and a half, Colonel. Yes. He'd have been with the first army in General Alexander, then. I don't know, Colonel. Yes, that's who he would have been with. Uh, does Mrs. Denise know whether she's expecting six or eight guests for dinner, Colonel? I think it will be eight, but you better check with her. She was on the telephone a while ago. Yes, this is a very different war to the one I knew, Mrs. Callaghan. Very different. In North Africa, it's been like a sea battle. Ships on an ocean. I suppose your father would remember the same war I remember. Uh, yes, Colonel. Did he serve? He was in the artillery. Uh, will you let me know the wines to serve, Colonel? I get mixed up with the red ones at the end of the cellar. Artillery. All horses. Very different to today, Mrs. Callaghan. Colonel Denise, would you do me a favour? A uh, favour? Oh, yes. The war. Well, I, I don't like talking about it. It starts me off. Coming here has changed everything for the better for me and the boys. And I'd like to try and forget. How insensitive I've been, Mrs. Callahan. I am sorry. We old soldiers should be put in our place more often. Please accept my apologies. That's all right, Colonel. I'll go now. Thanks for the raise. Uh, before you go... Yes? I do understand, you know. It was my business to understand. That's all we're good for. To know our men and try and see things their way and then make them fighters, even with that knowledge. 
We officers always collect a lot of ill feeling, especially if we survive. But all we ever want is to share the war with the men who fight with us. Yes, Colonel. Or do you think I should have said, fight for us? I don't know anything about the army, Colonel. Perhaps you should. It is the one thing that mattered to your husband for some years. The army was everything, all he had. Or is that cruel? No, it's true. Jack would have stayed on in the army after the war. He loved it. He loved it. That means I would have had to love it as well, somehow. So you will talk to me about it? It looks as though I am already. It's one of the reasons why I took you on. To help. To do what I could. But you didn't know me. It was Mrs. Denise who interviewed me. I take the decisions in this house. I picked your letter from the others. It was the least I could do, sitting here, out of it all. Home, 15th of June, 1945. Dear Molly, thanks for your letter, love. I look forward to Mondays now when we get your news. People still ask after you, and it's nice to have something to tell them. I see quite a few of your old gang at the shops. Your father wouldn't stay off work for the full month and went back last Wednesday. It's at his own risk, the doctor says. He can't stand being at home. I suppose that really means that he can't stand me. That comes as no surprise. He's much happier back at the docks along with his mates. I don't mind as long as he doesn't bring them back here. What are they, Mrs Denise? Snipe, dear. They're not very big, are they? Well, they're all the shooting there is at this time of year before the grass season starts. The Colonel had a day out on the moors with one of his dog breeding friends and he came home with these. Uh, what do I do with them? Well, it's quite easy. All you have to do is to pluck them and then bend the neck back like this, then push it back through the body. <laughs> they're best done under a hot grill, but only for ten minutes. Snipe have to fly through the kitchen, Molly, dear. When they're served, they should bleed just ever so slightly. What about the innards? Oh, you leave those in. That's the best part, dear. And the brains. You cut the heads off and suck the brains out, holding the long beak like this. <laughs> There's a delightful story by Guy de Maupassant about a group of sportsmen, a club or something like that, and every month or so they have a dinner, and the best shot, I, I think it's, it's, it's the best something, he is given all the heads to suck. Does the Colonel want them tonight? Oh, yes, dear. Oh, you don't hang snipe or, or any of the little birds like golden plover or blackcock. They have to be eaten as fresh as possible. Mrs. Denise. Oh, God. What is it, Molly, dear? Would you do them? Oh, <laughs> you'll pick it up in no time at all. It's very easy. Just ten minutes, though. They must fly through the kitchen like they flew through the air. Just prick them with a fork to see if they're still pink. Now, what shall we have? Are you all right, Molly, dear? I'll survive. You'll have to get used to game, dear. From August on, we eat it fairly regularly. I'd, I'd be doing all the cooking myself if we didn't get you used to it. I understand, Mrs. Denise. <laughs> the snipes will be properly done. <laughs> uh, snipe, dear. <laughs> Not snipes. Snipe. With their heads stuck up their arse. What a life. Silly young devil. He's gone to the wrong place. I can see his tail wagging over the long grass. <laughs> he hasn't got a brain in his head, Haveldar. He's going to need a lot of training. Why doesn't he eat the birds when he finds them? Instinct, Haveldar. What's instinct, Colonel? Discipline that doesn't need to be taught, Haveldar. You just know. There, he's found the ball. Here he comes, the great idiot. I wish I had a dog. Let us say you have a part of him. Which part? Which part would you like? I think I'd like his tail. Well, Haveldar, I think that's a good choice. Seems to be where this puppy keeps his brains. <laughs> Find! Go on, off you go. Find! <laughs> I was not drunk, Your Honour. The constable who was called over to conduct you from the tram car at the pier head has reported that you were, in his opinion, incapacitated through drinking. 
You heard his evidence? Well, it's not true. He's not a doctor. Why were you unable to remove yourself from the tram car if, as you say, you were sober? Uh, malaria, Your Honour. Recurring malaria. You have malaria? I I've had it since 1917, when I was in the Black Sea with the Indian troops. This is 1945, Mr. Drew. Uh, it, it never leaves you, Your Honour. No, they know me at the Hospital for Tropical Diseases. They'll tell you. I'm on their books. Uh, does malaria cause a man to smell of drink, Mr. Drew? <laughs> Uh, well, I, I'm not saying that I'd not had a drink or two, but that's not the same as being drunk. I can see that you are not in the best of health, Mr. Drew. Oh, no, Your Honour. I've just come out of hospital. And what was your complaint? Malaria? No, Your Honour. Gas. Me stomach. Two lots of gas, I caught. My, my, we are poorly in Liverpool on a Saturday night, 20 minutes after closing time. <laughs> Fine, two pounds. Um, I don't want to see you here again, Mr. Drew. Uh, no, Your Honour. Uh, can we keep this out of the paper? The press, like the law, must take its own course, Mr. Drew. Well, it's me employees. Stand see. down. Oh. Next case. I've had this material for over a year, Molly, dear. Do you like it? Oh, yes, that's that's lovely cloth. I've been keeping it on one side for a special occasion. Isn't it an unusual shade of green? Uh, do you think it suits me? Um, yes, if it's cut right. <laughs> it takes a tall woman to wear a whole dress made out of stuff like this. <laughs> How refreshingly direct you are, dear. Um, that's why I was wondering if you might make the dress for me. I would see that you were rewarded. We can arrange something. Have you got a pattern? Yes, although I think we must modify it. I think it's a little too fussy, but you can soon change that. I'd like it to be simple. How many did you find, Daniel? Thousands, Ken. They were all over the fields. You like the smell? Mm -hmm. Nothing like that smell. They smell to me like something that's been dead, Colonel. Oh, go on with your mushrooms. You're an uncultivated savage. Yes, Colonel. Take them into your mother now. We'll have some of those little ones for breakfast. That bird's been singing all afternoon. You'd think you'd get tired. Ah, oh, that's all nightingales are good for. That's not a nightingale. It's half past three. They sing more in the day than they do at night. Ah, oh, there it is. That's a sparrow. <laughs> yeah, he's too big for a sparrow. He's not up to much. Looks like nothing at all. Ah, oh, how's the drapery for the humped ball coming along? Oh, it's a lot of work. She looked good in it, though. She's got the right figure. Yeah, like a bloody rake. She's got dignity when she's dressed up. I think she looks quite smart. Well, the Colonel's back from Scotland tomorrow. I hope he brings some of his surprises. What surprises? Oh, he usually has a few uh, knick-knacks in his pocket. Are you uh, coming down to the pub tomorrow? Yes, Jim. By myself. Perhaps I'll find you brought your wife this time. Home, June 23rd, 1945. Dear Molly, getting your letter is like the sun shining through the window. You sound very happy. I wish I could say the same for us. I told you that Charlie had a stroke while he was emceeing at the Dunlop Works dance. Well, he had another one last week. Nin has to run the shop now and you should hear her giving Charlie the payout. They talk about Jack all the time. I suppose the war will end this summer, not before time. I've had enough of it to last me a lifetime. Why don't you want to walk back with me? I'm quite happy on my own. You ride your bike. Oh, I'd rather walk with you. It's a nice night. I'm not coming here again. Oh, that's what you said last time. But where else is there in this dump? They only have a dance once every Preston Guild. There's no life here. You're a good dancer, aren't you, Mo? Good enough. Oh, I love dancing. I could dance with you. Not likely. Not with you. I'm not bad. You'd be dancing with your wife, wouldn't you, Jim? Like a good lad. Wouldn't you bring her out of the cupboard for one evening out? She doesn't like going out. You'd never take her anywhere. That's no way to treat her. She sits in that cottage from Sunday to Saturday. Uh, he was a dancer, wasn't he? Your fella? Yes. 
I was the best dancer in Liverpool. We were a good team. Oh. I've got no chance, have I? No chance at all, Jim. For how long? Your guess is as good as mine. He was one in a million. You mean he's one in a million now? He always was, Jim. You're knocking on the wrong door. You'll change. You've got to change. There's a lot more where I've come from. Ah, oh, you'll never get away with it. It'll be a waste of a good woman, Molly. And if you don't take your arm away, there'll be a waste of a good man in a minute. God, Lizzie, you're an hard woman to live with. How would you know your dirty stop out? Come on, what is it? Eh? You'd start around an empty house. These. What? My darling Joe. Uh, oh. What made you stick them under the carpet in the best room? Did you think I never cleaned in there? Oh, don't answer, Joe. I know why. It's when you slept in there last week when you didn't want to be near me. Give them to me. Darling Joe, thanks for the five pounds. Thanks for this. Thanks for that. You're keeping her. I get three bloody pounds a week to run this place and she gets five. That's what you've become, Joe Drew. Uh, I'm... I'm sorry, Lizzie. I, I've been under the arm. You put her away, Joe. Do you hear? I've got enough to put up with. Lizzie... She's not... Put her away. Oh, and while we're about it, I'll take her weekly wages. If you can afford it for her, you can afford it for me. That was just some gold nuggets, love. Weekend stuff. It's not regular. When your sick pay was coming through, I found out how much you was getting, Joe. <sighs> I've kept quiet till now. I want eight pounds a week from now on, then we'll <sighs> see if she still wants you with a water cut off. Lizzie, can't we try and get our Molly and the boys back home? This house has been a morgue since they left. It gets me down. Oh, she's got her own life to lead. We don't want those boys growing up with a man like you, Joe. You'd put them off life for good. I'll get on with the young one, all right. But, well, he's under two. When he gets past your mental age, he'll recognise you for the butcher's dog you are. And that'll take him a couple of months from now. You're the child, Joe. Give him a chance to grow up to be men. With the pally glide for a father? If he comes out, then there'll be all air cream and dancing pumps. Well, they made him a sergeant, which is a sight more than they ever made you. It took you all your time to stay on your horse. He was a decent lad. Oh, we could have done with him coming back. Must have been bloody short to make him a sergeant. He couldn't punch an hole in the wet echo. Oh, listen to him, the diddy man of Jock Road. And remember this, Joe Drew. That boy would never have ended up treating our Molly like you treat me. Never. No, we'll never know, will we? Even Perfect Jack might have changed after a few years in the army with the hard cases. You don't find many sergeants in the guards doing the slow fox trot. Here, James. Had a good week, Colonel. The best for many a year. Now grab the head, man. Together now. Oh, <laughs> smell that, eh? Going to be good. <laughs> All right, that end. All right. <laughs> Where to, Colonel? Straight through the kitchen and into the second pantry. Christ! <laughs> Open the door to the second pantry, Molly. <laughs> Hurry up! This fellow's heavy. Oh, what's that thing? It's terrible. Let's get past now. Just ease his ankles round the door. All right. That's right. I'll bring you back round now. With me, Molly. What is it? It's a stag, girl. A fine stag. Lay it on the slab, James. Oh, we'll, we'll quarter it tomorrow. Can I shut the door now before it stinks out my kitchen? Colonel Denise, what am I expected to do with that poor thing? Oh, don't worry, Mrs. Callahan. I'll introduce you to the mistress. But what about this quartering? I'll do that for you. And the skinny. I'm keeping the head. It's a good 12-pointer. We'll hang the quarters for another two weeks. In there? Well, where else? Well, isn't there anywhere else outside? It's the smell. That's what the second pantry is for, Mrs. Callahan. Oh, there's another parcel in the boot, Jan. Uh -huh. Can you fetch it for me? All right, Colonel. <sighs> I think I'm going to sit down. Now, when James brings the other parcel, put that in the second pantry as well. 
Oh, I'd like some tea in about half an hour. After I've had my bath. Bringing that dirty great thing into my kitchen. What does he think this is? A bloody slaughterhouse? Oh, that stink. Here's surprise packet number two. Well, what's in this one? Shrunken heads. Look. Oh, the size of it. I reckon it weighs 25 pounds. He's been on the tweed in Scotland. He always brings a big salmon back. Mum, can I... Hey, what's that? It's a fish. Isn't it huge? Its eyes are open. Who caught it? The colonel. He must be good at fishing to catch one this big. It's as big as our bill. Oh, don't be so impressed. I've never seen such a smashing fish. Go and have a look in the second pantry, Haveldar. Is there something else? Oh, yes, there's certainly something. Now, don't take it out on the kid, Molly. Little soldier, look at my kitchen. Have I got to live with that horrible niff for a fortnight till it's rotten enough for him? Oh, no! <laughs> What's the matter, son? Oh, that poor animal! He's left it with its eyes open! Oh, <laughs> look, it's a deer, son. Come on, now. now what's Come so on, different love. about the deer, Dan? What about the old fish here? <laughs> All right, Avildar. Stop calling me Avildar. I'm not Avildar. I'm Dan. Home, July 8th, 1945. Dear Molly, you may as well find out about this business now as later. Here's a clipping from the Echo which will explain itself. It's not the first time he's been in the news lately. He was on a drunk charge some time back, but I didn't see the point in worrying you. The woman's husband made quite a mess of him. You know he's not very strong. From what I hear, this woman could tuck him under her arm for a crutch. Your father didn't want the case prosecuted, but the police said it wasn't up to him as the assault was in a public place. It doesn't make sense to me. Anyway, everybody knows about it now. I can't go down to the co-op. Nin does the shopping for me. Ah, the men are never the same when they come back. You do seem very expert with that machine, Molly, dear. How will we do it? About halfway, Mrs. Denise. There's only a week. It'll be ready. Home, July 12th, 1945. Dear Molly, I wish you'd try and write to me more often. It broke my heart to write that last letter, and I thought you might write back straight away. This is to tell you that your father's lost his job as a superintendent and he's now going back to be a warehouse captain. You can guess how he's taken it. He won't crack on that it's happened, but I've been told by another party. I can't take much more of it, Molly. Oh, your sisters come round, but they don't say much. And afterwards there'll be iced melon. Don't forget the ginger, Molly, dear. Benson should be just right after these two nice days. Uh, let's have a look at it, shall we? What's that you're cooking, Molly, dear? It's called Scouse, Mrs. Denise. Scouse? I've never heard of that. No, I don't suppose you have. Well, aren't you and the boys having some venison? You usually have what we have at table, uh, when there's enough. It's, uh, it's too rich. Still at it, Mole. Fire, the flying Scot's got nothing on you. Home, July 16th, 1945. Dear Molly, I got your letter, such as it was. You must be hard worked if that's all the time you could afford. Oh, thank God that's finished. I'm just going to pop down to the kitchen to show Molly. We're already late. Oh, it won't take a moment. She's worked very well. <laughs> Don't you think it's superb? Yes, it's charming. <laughs> You'll have to hurry. Oh, I won't be long. If you bring the car round, I'll meet you at the front door. There we are, Molly, dear. How does it look? That's the one you were making, the green one. Oh, you look very smart. It suits you. <laughs> Thank you, dear. Uh, here you are. They're very scarce, you know. Uh, well, I, I must rush. I'm late already. What did Mrs. Denise give you, Mum? Twenty cigarettes. She gave me twenty cigarettes. Why are you crying, Mum? <laughs> Be quiet and eat your dinner. You're making our Bill cry. 
crying because you're crying. I think I'm going to cry as well. <laughs> and we can all three of us cry together. Oh, Joe, don't say you're drunk again. All oh, right. I can't take any more. But what's holding you? Go on, scarp it, I'll manage. What do you do it for? A man's got a right to his friends, hasn't he? What am I expected to do? They asked me out for a drink and I have to go. I've noticed you've been dragged screaming into the alehouse, Joe. It must be agony being so popular. Ah, shut your gob, woman. You never stop talking. Don't you talk to me like that. I'm not one of your fancy you make women. make me sick. Oh, that's nice. I'm going to bed. Joe, I want our Molly back here. And she won't come back, you know that. She's up here with her tuppenny apeny toffs in the country. She's left home. Take your choice, Joe. Either she comes back here with the boys, or I'm leaving myself. I've had enough. Don't be bloody stupid. You can't leave here. I can do what the hell I like. I'm not staying here with just you and me. When they're here, I can stand it. But not just you and me, dear. She won't. Come back. Our Molly thinks she's going up in the world. Won't she want coming back here? Well, you'll have to find that out. Oh, look, Lizzie, I'm not a bloody magician. And neither am I, and it'd take a magician to find a way of living with you in peace. The book's closed, Joe. I mean it. I'm falling to pieces. I'm not well. There's nothing to keep me here but making a home for someone, and that doesn't mean you, you drunken git. Oh, Christ, Lizzie. Don't Christ me, Joe. Do something. Get yourself organised. <sighs> Can I have a cup of tea? Make it yourself. Ah, oh, come on, Lizzie. I've got a right to a cup of tea. You've got no rights in this house until our Molly walks through that door. I need her, Joe, and I need those boys. And so do you if you want a house to come home to a chuck and out time. You're mad. She's probably got some nice lad courting her already over there. I don't care if a bloody duke's asked her to marry oh. him. I want her here. So get on with it. That's right. She was the first in after the girl. <laughs> oh, come on now. You must tell me. I found it quite impossible to get anything approaching that kind of quality. It's beautifully made. It's got such flair. You won't believe me when I tell you. You have a little man somewhere. No, a little woman. It's the cook. Your cook? Mm -hmm. That Liverpool girl, she made it. I'd be very cross if you tell anyone else. Oh, very well. I'll, I'll keep quiet on the condition that she makes something for me. That's fair, I think. <laughs> Strange, I found the girl remarkably dull. She must have hidden talents. Oh, you're very gracious tonight, darling. After six years of putting up with the servants we've had, I think it's remarkable I can be charitable at all. <laughs> God help the army if the average soldier was anything like the average domestic. It's been good money thrown away. Oh, we've been very lucky with Molly. Let's hope we can keep her. Then I can stop looking like someone at Queen Victoria's funeral and dress nicely once in a while. Is Margaret babysitting for me and our Bill tonight? No. I thought you might be going out. Not tonight. But this is the night you go out with Jim. Not with Jim. He just goes to the same place. We don't go together. There's nowhere else to go around here. The pub. The wise old man of the mountains. What are you going to do then if you're not going out? I'm going to write to your gram. Mum? Yes? If Uncle Charlie's been ill, who's been taking care of his shop? Auntie Nin. If we go to see them, will she let me serve behind the counter like Uncle Charlie does? I think so. And turn the tap on the paraffin barrel? And count the nails. You were always good at counting the nails. There's the funny bridge, Mum, with the cars hanging on it. I remember it from when we came. I wonder why the Germans never bombed it. Does the Colonel take his car on it? He doesn't go to Liverpool, son. You can't shoot scouts. Thanks for 
taking all this trouble, ma'am, inviting everyone round to see me. It was a lovely idea. Here, put these plates on that tray. Can I carry something? Oh, it's too heavy, son. Oh, Dan, go and open the front door for your granddad. He's sticking again. All right. He's home early. I thought he was working on Saturday. No, he's taking time off. Hello there, fella. Hello. Hey, cup all of this bag. By God, what a day. What a day. They're all sitting out in the street. You're growing, la. Where is she? Where's my girl? Hello, Dad. Grandad brought some bottles home. I can hear them. Give us a kiss. Where's our Bill? He's in the best room with Nin. Hey, you're thinner, girl. How'd you get so brown? Have they got you ploughing the fields? I sit out in the garden a lot. Peeling the spuds. <laughs> right. Let the dog see the rabbit. Give me that bag, Dan. Uh, get some glasses, Lizzie. We're supposed to be having tea, Joe. Ah, to hell with the tea. You can't celebrate your daughter's homecoming with tea. Get that good glass. It'll only get broken. What's it for? You'd have it stuck in that bloody cabinet from here to doomsday. Uh, here, Jan. Thanks, Granddad. What is it? Open it up and see. I'm going through to where the men are. Is Charlie strong enough for the hard stuff, or will he pass out in the fumes? Hey, it's a book with an horse on the front. Study the horse, son. The horse will never destroy himself. Well, go in if you're going. All right. Oh, oh everybody. What's happened to him? He's never taken a blind bit of notice of Dan till just now. When you've got him figured out, tell me. After nearly 30 years, I'm no nearer. Here, take these in, love. Right. <laughs> so. Right, Grand. some clean glasses, everybody. What did Grandad mean about horses not destroying themselves? No, oh, you'd better ask him. I don't want to. I'm asking you. Your granddad has this idea, son, that man will destroy himself. Which man? The human race. All of us. Will we? Not on a nice day like today. Come on, let's go in and show Uncle Charlie your book. Mammy, Mammy, the sun shines east, the sun shines west. But I know where the sun shines best. Mammy, Mammy, I'd walk a million miles for one of your smiles, my man. <laughs> oh, oh, The busher on the way out. <laughs> Forward to go. What's oh. you mean, Gerriman? I'm Gerriman. <laughs> You're like a bugger in those, Lizzie. Get him up there. Please, up on the ground. Please, up on the ground. I'm not telling you what's going on. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and if, if I, I catch you bending, I'll saw your legs right off. Right off. So, so knees up, knees up, don't get knees up, knees up, on the ground. I need it. Well, it can only be the red man. Right. On your flight before I clap. I'm going to knock fit to win the jet. What is it, Joe? Telegram for our mob. For me. For me. Don't tremble, love. Don't tremble like that. They've made a mistake. It wasn't Jack. Oh, I knew it. They found him. You'd better read it, girl. No, I don't want to touch it. Is this telegram like the other one we got? Put the boy outside. I knew he wasn't dead. He's been lost. Open it, Joel. They were never sure. He, he was missing, just missing. Open the bloody thing. It's from your employers. The colonel is ill. They want you to go back. But she's only just got here. Yeah. We'll have no more telegrams delivered to this house. Knocking like that. I'll kill the little bastard. Riding round on his bike as if he owned the place. Come on, drink up and go home. The Colonel's kicked the arse out of this Jew, all right. I'll stay and help with the washing up. You go back to the shop, Charlie, and lie down. You look under the weather. Can I go up to the shop with Uncle Charlie? No, son, you stay here with your mother. Sit down there and don't move. I'll make some tea. Come on, make yourself useful, Joe. Let Nin have a talk with her. I'll catch your bad news coming out the post office yard one day and I'll stick a stick through his bloody spokes. Come and help me wash these glasses. You'll only nag if I break them. I don't like telegrams, Auntie Nin. Have you seen the book Grandad gave me? 
Oh, that's nice, son. My mum hasn't cried for ages like this. She cried not long ago, but it wasn't much. You must always love your mother, son. Forget her and it'll be the rock you'll perish on. How could I forget her? She's my mum. And never forget who your father was. He was a soldier. He was your father first. And his name was Jack Callahan. Don't mean. They all enlisted. First in the queue. Every man in the family, except Charlie. He's not well now, but he's still emceeing the dances. He's had a rheumatic heart and it's kept him alive. There was no talking to them. The queues stretched down the pavement. Does he know about his grandfather? I don't think he likes me very much. Not him. Your father's father. He was a sailor. He was what they call the captain's tiger on the Lusitania. When she sailed from Liverpool in spring 1915, he had to miss the boat. He had pneumonia. When the Germans sank her, he got out of bed and went round to the Liverpool King's recruiting office in his pyjamas to join up. In his pyjamas? Did he walk down the street in his pyjamas? Eck! He was killed two weeks after getting to France. He couldn't get it fast enough. He was a soldier as well, then. If I ever hear of you becoming a soldier, I'll come round and get you locked up in the madhouse. There can't be another one, Min. There can't. Let's talk about something else. Here's the tea. Do you want some, Dan? Me and our Bill have milk. No, I'll pour some in a cup then. Bill's asleep upstairs. Gran? Yes, son? If the party had gone on a bit longer, would you have some little Billy Wilkins for me? I should think so, if you'd behaved yourself. My mum's like little Billy Wilkins. Where's that? She doesn't feel very happy when she gets cigarettes off Mrs Denise. That's enough, Dan. What's he talking about? Well, Mrs Denise came in to show us her new dress that mum had made for her. And she gave Mum some cigarettes, like little Billy Wilkins bought for himself. And Mum had to cry. And me and our Bill had to cry as well. So you're a dressmaker as well, are you? By God, those people had take their pennies off a dead man's eyes. I was glad to do it. She's been very good to me. For what she can get out of you. Oh, you talk to a nin. She's working herself into the ground for this old couple. It's not right. You've got it all wrong, ma'am. I like it there. If I do any sewing for Mrs Denise, I do it because I want to. The boys are happy there. They're not your own, Molly. They can't understand what you've been through. You belong here. This is your home. I'd like it better if we were a bit nearer Uncle Charlie's shop. Dan, go and play in the backyard. Oh. Molly, your mother's right. They're just making use of your love. You're a floor cloth. Well, look at this telegram. You've only just got home and they want you back. You see why? The Colonel's ill. Is she a cripple? And what about this Margaret, the housemaid? Since the old fella's not up to the mark, he won't be eating much, will he? What do they need you for? Because I'm part of the place. I know what needs doing. I know what needs doing. You need your bloody head felt. Well, you're not going back today or tomorrow. You can go back on Monday. Ma'am, I, I said must... no, and that's flat. This house has been empty long enough while theirs has been full of other men's daughters. Let them rattle around in it for a while. Joe, wake up. Yeah, my... Come on, wake yeah. up. I want to talk to you about Molly. <sighs> What's to talk about? She's telling us a pack of lies. Oh, she doesn't want us to think she can't manage on her own. It's pride. But she's getting a taste for living with toffs. Our Molly can't cook to save her life. I know it and she knows it. When the war's over, they'll show the door and get a real cook. They won't have any patience with her. Best thing would be for her to get married again. If she stays with the colonels, she might meet some bright lad out the top drawer. No, mm. no, not Molly. She's stuck with Jack. Don't Catholics believe in divorce, even if one half's dead? He wasn't all Catholic, Joe. His mother had him baptised, that's all. He was never a churchgoer. He can't wash off that water. Might as well have had his head stuck in a tar barrel. She's got to give him a notice. Mm. That's right. Wave your magic wand. <laughs> I'm going back to sleep. I have to be up in the morning. But didn't you get my telegram, Molly dear? I sent it first thing Saturday morning. Yes, I couldn't leave straight away. Oh, but it was an emergency, dear. The Colonel is very ill indeed. I needed you there and then. I'm sorry. This was the earliest I could get back. I'm a little disappointed, Molly dear. You know how I depend on you. Things have been dreadful throughout the weekend. Margaret is worse than useless when she has to hurry. You know that. How's the Colonel now? 
He's very ill. The doctor is here twice a day. If he could move him without the risk of making him worse, he'd put him in hospital. What's the matter with the colonel? Malaria, dear. It's the recurring type. He caught it in India 20 years ago, and he's never been able to shake it off. And there are complications I don't pretend to understand. I've left your menu written out for this evening, plus the diet for the colonel. He's no appetite at the moment, but we do have to try. Ah, they got you back then. I had a bet with myself you'd be here yesterday. You know it all, Jim. Did you ever bother to go to school? Yeah, she's got you just where she wants you. Has she now? She could have managed by herself. The old bag's lazy, that's all. They're all like that. Pretending they're helpless. Why do you hang around, then? You don't have to work here. <laughs> because they're the only ones with gardens big enough. The working class don't employ gardeners, Molly. What a luxury. Not for us all, Jim. To some of us, you're just a flaming nuisance. Why don't you come away with me? We'll get out. We'll go somewhere else. There'll be plenty of jobs when the war's over. We could emigrate, if you like, go to Australia or Canada. You're out of your mind. I'll be a good father to the boys. Like you're a good husband to your wife. Uh, that's all over, Molly. We, we hardly talk. She was your wife's little girl as well, you know. Christ, you men drive me mad. You're not worth the date you stand on. Oh, that's not fair, Molly. I'm trying to tell you that I want you to marry me. You can't, you fool. You're married already. I wouldn't have you anyway, not even if you were done up with a bow. Ah, yes, you would. I know you would. Run a beans, Jim. Wheel your barrow and keep your hands clean. I'll bring you a bottle back tonight. You'll be sitting up with him. Oh, no, I won't. Oh, you'll make a good nursing sister, Molly. Hold his hand. And some new potatoes. They'll be small. Like the man that lifts them. <laughs> You're an odd woman. Molly, dear, I can't trust Margaret to do as she's told. I've told you the Colonel is extremely ill. There must be someone with him the whole time. I've only got one pair of hands, Mrs. Denise. I can't serve a dinner for four people and sit with the Colonel. Once you have finished the cooking, uh, Margaret and I will have to serve. Why can't you cancel the dinner? That's none of your business here. Do I get paid any extra? Extra? For nursing the Colonel. Have you taken leave of your senses, dear? All you are doing is sitting with him, not nursing him. I see. You have changed, Molly, dear. Did you have an absolutely awful weekend? This doesn't sound like you talking. He's got a lot of pictures in his room, hasn't he, Mum? Hush, Dan. Look at that one. On the horses with those long poles. Were they knights, Mum? Was the Colonel a knight? Be quiet. He can't hear me. He's asleep. You'll have to go to bed in a minute. It's nearly your bedtime. Is he in the pictures, Mum? Somewhere. Has he been crying? His face is all wet. That's sweat. The Colonel has a fever. Go on. And be quiet as you go down the landing. Mum, are any of these pictures of the enemy? Which enemy? The Colonel's enemy. The one he was fighting. But he wouldn't want a picture of him on his bedroom wall, would he? Who was he? Was he Hitler or Mussolini? I don't know who he was. Perhaps he was an Indian. That's where the colonel was posted. Good night, Mum. Can I read for a while? Five minutes. Switch your own light out. And I don't want to come along there and find you still reading when I come to bed. Hello there. Is this Cranwell House? Ah, that's right. Well, it didn't say so on the gate. Ah, oh, well, uh, that's to mix up the German spies. Uh, I'm looking for my daughter, Molly Callahan. What? Are you her mother? Well, if I'm not, I went through a lot for nothing. Oh, I... Ah, that's right, I remember now. I came over that day with Molly in the car. Well, you've lost a lot of weight. Cheeky bugger. Go on, lead the way, or I'll show you my operation scar. <laughs> You're her mother, all right. Oh, that bus conductor told me it wasn't a long walk from the stop to hear the liar. Oh, I'm blown for tugs. Eh? God, you're ignorant. Come on, let's be having you. A visitor for you. Oh, hell. Oh, let me sit down. Well, uh... Thanks, Jim. You can go now. Ah. What are you doing here? My feet are killing me. Oh, Oh, that's better. Is there any tea in that pot? I said, what are you doing here? I've left home. Oh, don't be daft. 
Well, I'm here, aren't I? After all this time, I don't believe you. You're having me on. Molly, I'd given up. On the day you went back, he was in trouble again with the police. They brought him home in a black mariah for the whole street to see. Ma'am, he's done worse. What's so special about now? I'll tell you what's worse. He slept in the best room and relieved himself in that cut glass fruit bowl out of the cabinet because he was too lazy to climb the stairs. That was it. I packed me things and left. Where's your case then? I left it in a hedge about a mile back. I couldn't carry it. I'm not going back. You can't stay here. I'll have to. There's nowhere else. Molly, dear, I... Oh, good evening. Uh, Mrs. Denise, this is my mother. She's just dropped in on us. I've just left my husband. Uh, she arrived from nowhere. Can she stay one night? I'll, I'll fix her up tomorrow. Molly, dear, you know I don't mind visitors, but it is hardly convenient with the colonel in upstairs. Look, it's only 6.30. There's plenty of time for her to try the public house in the village. Do you know what he did in my cut glass he, fruit? Bowl? I said she just dropped in, Mrs. Denise. I didn't know she was coming. I've got the dinner to make and the boys to bath. Very well, dear. But don't let it happen again. Just try and give me notice. That's all I ask. Cool. Fur coat and no drawers. She'd have me sleeping in the rhubarb. Don't think I can't see through you, ma'am. You're doing your best to wreck this job for me, but you're not going to succeed. This is my home. No, it's not. You know where your home is. Look, are you going to give me a cup of tea? Give us a kiss. Where's our bill? He's by the Morris. Do you want me to get him? Come on, you can show me the garden while your man puts the tea out. I'm interested in vegetables. They're good for you. I don't like beans much. No, oh, your mum could never stand cabbage. I used to tell her it was full of iron, but it made no difference. Do you know how I keep so young looking? You're not young, Gran. You're old. Onions. Onions purify the bloods. And when you feel that cucumber mole, remember to rub the peel on your face. It'll wipe the airs off you. It's God's goodness. Take your gran out into the garden, Dan. See if you can stop her talking. What is this place? An ale-outer and knock and shop for the bloody scene scouts. Get it on the counter. I've told you, mister, I'm not serving you. You've had enough. Don't talk up, la. Look at me, for God's sake. I'm standing here spitting feathers. You're not from round here, are you? From round here. Wouldn't catch me dead in here, beats yours. Where's the ale, then? There's the door. All right, all right. Did you do the favour, landlord? I'm looking for me daughter, Molly Callahan. Oh, what about her? Well, she's round here somewhere. Is she? Now, why don't you ask that chap over there? Why should he be interested? Ask him and find out. Uh. This gentleman's asking after a Molly Callahan, Jim. All right. What does he want her for? I'm a father. Can you see the likeness? Now, why do you come here shouting her name all over the pub? Ah, oh, some father you must be. You're a rotten drunk. A lattic. Where's me daughter? I thought I'd stick one on you. She won't want to see you. I'll decide that. Have you been interfering with her? Hey, now shut up. I'd rather have a smoked Irishman caught her than a country ass creeper. Buy us a drink, please. Now, boy. I'm warning you. Now, get aerated. No wonder it took so long to win the war with you out of it. All the men were here, propping up the bar. What's the price of duck? Hey, eh? that's enough. Oh. <coughs> By God, you've got the strength to tell. <coughs> Give it an hand here, cowboy. Think of your old father. Ah, oh, stay on the floor. Where's our Molly then? What do you want her for? I've come for a visit. Me and the tops are going to have a whist drive. I'm the squire in our street. Uh, no wonder she left her home. Here. Oh. 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 Thanks, son. <coughs> You're decent at that. That was the heat of the moment. Buy us a drink. Don't you know the war's over, innit? Don't you ever give up. Go on. Have mercy on me. Oh, nerve me, you did. By God, you had a punch like the Pope. Look at that arm. All right. Give him an arm. Uh, I never drink Jill, son. I'm only allowed pints. Hey, you're not that local water. A pint of stout, landlord. And careful how you pour it. Did you, uh... Did you know your wife's at the house? Oh, I have been tracking her down, see. Followed the Indian signs all the way. Have you come for an holiday? Uh, no, we've come to nurse the colonel, all of us. Tomorrow the old the football team's arriving. <laughs> It'll take the old of Liverpool to get the old gentleman's boilers fired again. Ah, you're right. It's a con. They didn't need her at all. Very seldom, son. They've got two feet to stand on, which is more than we have, eh? Here we are. The glasses are dirty. 
but I'd drink out of a sweaty clod. Here's looking at you. Cheers. You don't like me here, do you, landlord? I won't be sorry to see the back of you. Ah, the country. I always thought milk came out of a bottle. I'll show you where the house is. Oh, just directions, son. I'm planning a bit of an entrance and I'm a bad actor. I'd rather be on my own. I'll just put this with the old set. <coughs> That'll keep the heads down. Right. Give us the bearings. Turn right and go to the T-junction. Turn left there and just keep going. It's about two miles on the left. You're a fella, aren't you? I wish I was. Good luck. Get her out. Uh, good night, landlord. I hope your private life is better than your ale. Molly, go up to the Colonel, please. But, but I'm in the middle of... At once. He's much worse. I have to telephone. Don't shout at me. I'm not deaf. Oh, please, hurry up. Will you carry on peeling those, ma'am? Not likely. Not for old hard face. Don't you like slicing beans, Gran? I do them sometimes. Does she have your stalk and the boilers? No, Jim has to do that. I thought he was the gardener. Molly! I've come for you and your ma! Bring her out! Let's have a look at you, show yourself! Is Lizzie there with you? Is this the house? Anyone at home? Strike her like the war's over. Come on out Molly? and bring you Molly? Back. What's all that Call noise? That's my father. Don't worry, it's all Call right. This is your father. Oh, dear. He says the war's over. The they want me home. He's drunk. I had presumed that from his extraordinary display of bad manners. Will you tell him to take his vehicle off the drive? I've no doubt it will be leaking oil. It's not his van. He's borrowed one of the warehouses. Molly, dear, I am indifferent as to who owns the wretched thing. I just want it removed. This is Denise. I think the Colonel's dead. I know. Then why did you ask me to go off and sit with him? He kept asking me not to leave him alone. He was frightened, Molly, dear. Poor old boy. I'm going back to Liverpool tonight. I might as well. They'll be dancing in the streets. Yes. I think that would be best. I hope you'll manage. Oh, I think we might. We're not quite helpless, dear. You've been a great help. Thank you. I'm not sure where I am. It's a shock. No, 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 no not shock. Maybe a little disorientated. Everyone seems to be leaving at once. Are you sure you don't need me? I could stay a few days. Make your mind up, Molly dear. I can bury my husband under my own steam, I can assure you. Go home with your own people. Well, if you don't mind me running off and leaving There'll you... There'll be plenty of old friends coming over to help me. You know how they gather round at a time like this. I'll have to go. Yes. I think the sooner the better, Molly dear. I hope you find a new husband. I don't expect I will, but there we are. I'd better go. You make a mess of your drive. Poor Mrs. Denise. The wars were never the same. No, Molly dear. And neither are the widows. Leave the gate open. Goodbye. Goodbye. Aren't you going to say it, Cheerio? I'm sorry. I was going to write a letter. Leaving me here among the beans? Will she be all right? Oh, is that all you're worried about? She takes good care of herself. Will her daughter come back from Switzerland to help out? Oh, Silla? No. Why not? God, all you want to talk about is them. What about me? Take me seriously for a minute. Come on, Molly! As I said, I'll write you a letter. But why won't this Silla come back and help out? She's not in Switzerland, love. She's in a mental hospital near Manchester. 
She's a vegetable. Like me. Oh, dear God. Goodbye, Jim. Goodbye. of the house. In A Place in the Country by David Pownall, Molly Callahan was played by June Barry, Mrs. Drew, Molly Sugden, Mr. Drew, David Jackson, Dan, Judy Parfitt, Mrs. Denise, Catherine Parr, Jim, Alan Rothwell, Colonel Denise, Jeffrey Banks, the magistrate, Paul Webster, and Nin Doreen Sloan. The play was produced in Leeds by Alfred Bradley. <laughs>